Hi everybody, Juliana Page here. I am the author of the God's Vibes Matter books, and we are on day 28 of a 30-day God's Vibes Matter devotional challenge. Now, if you're new, the God's Vibes Matter devotional challenge is 30 days of challenging yourself to really consecrate yourself, as the board says, get before God, seek Him first, make Him a priority, really seek Him, really focus on your intimacy with Christ, and also learn to embrace the season that you're in. Maybe there's things that God is revealing to you in this specific season. Maybe there's promises that He's asking you to meditate on and commit to heart. Maybe He's stirring up your faith. Maybe He's activating your prayer life and making you too hot for the enemy to handle, right? All wonderful things and we don't get to experience them in the same way for not spending time with God consistently. So I have a message that came out of my devotional time and it's kind of a growing and stirring up. These 30 days have been, you know, these 28 days have been leading to a consistent message I've been finding for me specifically in this season that I'm in. So I'll share a little bit about that, but I'm going to start us in prayer and then I'll give you a little bit about the devotional if you're new, but otherwise I'm just going to dive right in. So Father God, we thank you that you are the God of light, Lord, that in your light, in your presence, Lord, is fullness of joy in everything that we could ever have ask or need of. We thank you, Lord, that you are a good father. We thank you, Lord, for your gift of salvation. We thank you, God, for the freedom, for the joy, for the goodness that comes from spending time with you, Lord. We thank you, God, that you delight in us, that you pursue us, God, and that you give us the opportunity to pursue you. We thank you, God, for the revelation and the glory that comes out of time spent with you, Lord. We just commit this time to you, Lord. We ask that you take over, that you reveal yourself, Lord, that you just have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I am a writer. <laughs> I write everything down. Oh, you can't really see that. Ooh. But I am going to share some of the things that were stirring up for me, and then I'm going to make it biblical and give you some of that too. So first, I actually just wanted to start by reading from Matthew chapter 6, and there's a particular verse that I want to highlight here because it'll back what we're going to talk about. There's two verses that I'm going to kind of bring to surface. So the first one, Matthew 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is sound, your entire body will be full of light. But if your eye is unsound, your whole body will be full of darkness. If the very light in your conscience is darkened, how dense is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise and be against the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, being deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatever else is trusted in. Therefore, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body, what you shall put on is not life greater in quality than food and the body far above and more excellent than clothing. So it continues. Matthew 6 is a beautiful verse to meditate on. But the part that I'm really highlighting here is that the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is sound, your entire body will be full of light. Again, Matthew 6, and that's coming from verse 21 is where I started. And I went to about verse 26. The other one that I want to highlight is coming from Ephesians, and it's Ephesians 1.18, and it's what Paul is, is talking about to the Ephesians. It's part of his prayer to them, what he would hope for them. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, 
his set apart ones. So Paul here in Ephesians verse 118 is reinforcing the desire, the, the need, the impact of us having an awareness of God, of us being flooded with light, full of a heavenly perspective. Paul is highlighting that. We also saw it in Matthew. And it was interesting because I was going through some things around the house today and I came across, I don't know if you can see it, maybe back here. There you go. Ooh, <laughs> kind of. But the verse that's on here, I'll read it to you, is also the same verse that I've been bringing out and that the devotional is based on. And it says this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. This is also coming from Matthew 6. It happens to be Matthew 6 verse 33. And so that is really the heart of the God's Vibes Matter devotional is that we will position ourselves to seek the kingdom first so that we can shift in our perspective. And so as I was studying, if you've been following these videos, there is a pray template that we've been going through. So there's a, a template for each day that you'll fill out. And then there's also a pray model that you follow, which is P-R-A-Y, praise, repent, ask, and yield. So I'll kind of take you through how that applies to me. But as I was journaling, some things were starting to stir up in me and I was really getting a couple of wisdom bits, if you will. Here's one. You can't worship God if you don't know him. So you can say, how great is our God? God is good. I honor you. But if you're not really full of belief in your heart of who God is, and if you're not saying that with absolute sincerity, it doesn't have the same impact. And God wants you to know him, right? You have to have a relationship with God to highlight him and to highlight what matters to him. So if you don't know God, then it's very likely that you're not able to see God in other people, or you're not able to see from a heavenly perspective as you're going about your life. So the God's Vibes Matter devotional, I was just brought back to the space of, of the why. What is the heart behind it? Why would you spend so much time? Why would you challenge yourself every 30 days on repeat, right? Why would you challenge yourself to daily seek the kingdom first? Why would you um, do a devotional like this? And I just kept getting, it's about relationship. It's about fellowship with God. And so then today, which was so awesome, a part of my church family and my church community, we brought up this image of, you know, if you're, if you're shooting like a bow and arrow, I got my arrows here. <laughs> if you're shooting a bow and arrow, there's two focus points. So you have your near focus of what you're focusing on here, but then you have your target and where you're aiming. And so that metaphor, that analogy is kind of like life where we have you know, our problems, our circumstances, the things that we're exposed to. And then we also have a heavenly perspective. Now, the interesting thing is, is we can often fixate on what's happening right here in our world around us and lose sight of heaven, which is what matters, right? But if you spend time with God, if you truly learn to delight in him because you start to identify who he is, you start to believe his promises, you start reading his word, and that word starts to become alive and active to you. And when you get full of that light, everything else comes with it. The peace, the joy, the wisdom, the understanding, the discernment, the comfort, so many things, the provision, whatever it is that you need, starts. heaven starts communicating with you. And so... What that looks like if we're using this example is you start to see clearly heaven more than you see your nearsighted problems and they switch focus. So you're starting to see heaven's thoughts about what's happening in your life. You're starting to approach your life from a heavenly perspective and that is amazing. I mean, can you just picture, there's just people that go through life just full of joy. They're, they could have things going on in their life just like we, we do as humans having a human experience, being spiritual beings having a human experience, we have 
problems. We face different challenges, but to be able to go through that with heavenly perspective and to still praise God and know that he's with you and keep your focus on heaven is next level. And it's absolutely amazing. Who would not want to seek that, right? So to bring that further, the revelation that I was getting is that we can't accomplish all we've been called to do if our aim is off. God wants to give us good focus. So he's not going to pressure you into seeking him. He's not going to push for devotion. Of course, he, he delights in you. You are his treasure. You're the apple of his eye. He knows how many hairs you have on your head. He formed you. He shaped you. He's called you. He saved you. He wants a good life for you, but you do have the choice of whether or not you want to receive that. And that's how the kingdom works. It doesn't work by force and by pushing and by trying to gain or earn your way, but it works through receiving what he's already given to us. And he wants us to get comfortable with that. So my encouragement today is to maintain fresh fellowship or commit to a fellowship focus. Let that be what you're running after. Realize what all God has made available to you. Be grateful for that. Delight in that. It'll be so much easier for you to seek God when it's from a genuine place of just overwhelming gratitude for what he's done. And then the other piece that I was getting was that sometimes we can resist relationship because we want to be further along. We're resisting the season that we're in. We're comparing ourselves to other people. Just so many things can get us off the path or distracted. And the enemy is determined to start doing that. But the word that I was getting, another revelatory word, is that God is a trailblazer. God has the wonderful new in you, the wonderful new that has not been done before, but you're not going to see it. You're not going to receive it if you're not communicating with him, if you're not fellowshipping with him, if you're not writing down the vision and the ideas and all that stuff that he's giving to you in his presence. So the aim here... If we're talking about aim and still using that as the metaphor, the aim here is to trust him. And if you don't yet, the aim is to get to that point where you do and where you just are able to surrender and give your life to him and trust him with every detail, including yourself. Amen? So going through the pray template would look something like this with what we just walked through. So it would be like this. Father God, I thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet. I thank you, God, that you fill us with light, God, and you dispel darkness. I thank you, God, that you are light, and in you there is no darkness. I thank you, God, that you are a good father. I thank you, God, that you cause us to grow in greater revelation of you, that you reveal to us more about the hope of the call that is on our life, Lord. I thank you, God, that you are a God of relationship and that you delight in fellowshipping with us, God, and that you cause us to delight in fellowshipping with you. So that would be your praise. Praise can be thank you, thank you, thank you for the things that you're thanking God for. It can also be worshiping God for who he is. For So if you know him, for example, it's easy for you to start worshiping him for who he is. And even saying who he is and just declaring it, Father God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, meaning you know what God has done in their lives. He's the God that's done all these wonders and miracles, and he's still your God, right? So when you start doing that, you are worshiping him and just starting to stir up this delight, right? Then you move into repent, and repent is all about cleansing, surrender, repenting, changing your mind. So you're letting Go into the hands of the Father. Any sin of thought, word, or action, you are sharing with God, releasing to Him anything that the Holy Spirit convicts you about. Maybe you're recommitting to trust Him with something. Maybe it's casting cares. It could be different every day. But the point is to have true, authentic repentance. And then from that, you move freely into asking Him boldly for what it is that you have need of. And He knows what you have need of. So the the encouragement on this part is to take it deeper. Take it deeper into the things that you want breakthrough on. The things that you know God has promised you and you're declaring those, you're receiving those into your life. And then as you do that, you also then flow into 
why, which is yield. It's God's yes over what you prayed for. And then there's the, just the revelation that he's done it and that you are just coming into alignment with what God has done. Amen. So in this case, if we, if I'm repenting in this example, so I'm praising God. Now I'm repenting of any time that I've tried to take the wheel and not receive what God has had for me in that space. Any time that I've resisted God because I've pursued other things that I thought were more important. Any time that I did not represent him well. And I, I can keep going, but that's an example. And then ask is asking God that you would reveal yourself to me in a fresh way. That you would show me experientially what is the hope of this call, Lord. That you would give me this courage and this strength and this boldness, Lord to walk worthy of the call that's on my life, God, that you would help me to study your word, to really have it rooted and planted in me, that God, that you would help me to start to grow in greater encounters with you, right? So that would be the ask. And then the yield is like believing that God is doing it. Thank you, God, for the gift of our relationship. Thank you, God, for the fruit of our relationship. God, thank you for this new level of glory. You move me from glory to glory. Thank you, God, that you are doing that. And the more times that you can line it with scripture, the better, because God's word does not return void. So that's just an example of how to move through the God's Vibes Matter devotional. I've gone through the longer videos. I've really gone in uh, thoroughly of how to work through the devotional. So if you want more, you can definitely click on those other videos. And if you are interested in purchasing the devotional, you can get it at julianapage.com or on amazon.com. And I recommend if you are going to order it, it would be very beneficial to consider doing a group where you have a 30 day challenge that you're hosting. And so with that, you would have your personal experience and then you would be holding each other accountable to be sharing what you're learning through doing this challenge or just get the devotional, share the devotional, buy it as a gift, right? But the encouragement is to seek the Lord, to delight in the Lord, to seek his kingdom first, not all these other things that you think you have need of because your aim needs to be right to really go and accomplish and just receive all that God has for you. Amen. So focus on fellowship, fellowship focus in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> All right, everybody. God bless you.